Hi, this is David Williams. I'm with Clint Webb this morning. Clint, you doing okay? So far, so good, brother. Just got my workout in. Oh, wow. That's cool. Well, that's good to have your workout in. It is nine o'clock. Um, I've been up since about three, but I didn't work out. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm already uh, well into my work day, you know, starting that early in the morning, but I, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join me. We're going to just have a conversation uh, for a bit. And what I'd like for you to do initially is just briefly mention who you are and what you do. And then at the end, I will allow you to expand on that, how people can connect with you on social media and those things. So briefly who you are and what you do, and then I'll dive in. Yeah, David. Well, I appreciate you having me on. Uh, it's an honor. I uh, first met you, what, a couple of years ago at yep. uh, one of Michelle's events um, at Spaces. So that's great. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm a career salesperson. Um, I have recently switched jobs in this uh, new day and age. It's kind of kind of difficult to do so, um, but I wanted to transition from corporate America uh, to more of a small business. So now I work with Coeco Office Systems. Um, it's a family-run business. Um, been in the industry for 99 years, starting off selling pens and paper. Now we're up to uh, multifunctional printers, wide-format printing machines, high-performance scanners, IT managed service, you name it, we do it. Yeah, I, I thought that name sounded kind of familiar. So when you mentioned the, the early stages, I think that's probably where I remember them from because I started my first business in the 1980s. So uh, mm probably came across them, you know, back in that time frame. So what we're going to do today, Clint, is what I want you to do, obviously, you've shared with the people that you made a transition, you're in the sales world. So what I'd like for you to share, because one of the things I picked up on our first meeting is that you were very positive, very upbeat. That was kind of the impression you left me with. And then we connected, like a lot of people do, uh, on LinkedIn and have stayed in touch since then. Uh, via LinkedIn, which is obviously one of the reasons that I reached out with you uh, to you uh, and having uh, Michelle and I are connected and we're, you're connected. And it's amazing. Then, right, you start making those connections on LinkedIn. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, we know so many of the same people. But what I want you to do is talk about like some of the things that you've experienced in the many years you've been in sales and what you find yourself doing when things are a little slow, maybe some habits that you are, are doing uh, that are good. So what we want, don't want to do is talk about everything. Well, sometimes it is helpful to talk about, this is what I've done wrong and this is how I learned from it. So anything you can share uh, with folks to encourage them, because even if they are working for, if they're working for a company and they're in sales, um, or they're like myself, I'm self-employed, so I still feel that I'm in sales. So at some point, I think we're all somewhat in sales, uh, even if our title is not salesperson or sales rep. So with that said, I'm gonna quit talking. I'm gonna jot down a few notes like I've done on previous interviews, and then I may come back to something you said, and say, okay, uh, Clint, can you expand on that a little bit? So with that said, you've yeah. got the floor, my friend, dive in. Yeah, David. Um, so. I started back in sales when I was a young kid. Um, I was 20 years old, um, just starting out. I uh, got my first sales job um, at a, a music store on Franklin Street where we had to sell subscription services. We had to upsell stuff. So that's kind of where it all started for me. And um, as I said in my bio, man, that's the most fun I've ever had at any job, period. Um, I mean, working at a music store on a college campus, how could it get any better? Um, but that was really my, my run of, uh, you know, started my run with corporate America, um, but kind of been through it all. That was in the late 90s um, and, you know, kind of been through it all since then, you know, worked at Best Buy selling mobile and their mobile plans, worked at Blockbuster Video, and then, you know, Blockbuster started falling apart. Um, and, you know, my, my store was one of the last ones to make it in North Carolina because of how strong our sales program was um, with myself and my team um, leading that, of course. Um, and then I went to car sales for about six months, like right during the recession, um, which probably hindsight wasn't the best idea. However, it allowed me to learn so much and to grow so much. I mean, even in that first six months, I mean, in that six months, it was seeing the people, seeing how they were struggling and seeing what kind of economic decisions they had to make for them and their families where they wanted something that would fit, but had to settle for something that didn't necessarily fit their needs 
Um, and, you know, so that was kind of kind of interesting to see as far as going from the surplus that we had, um, you know, before 2008 to everything afterwards. Um, but then I had, um, I was reached out to by a friend uh, to apply for Time Warner Cable, um, which, you know, is not the easiest company to work for. People hated us, you know? Um, and so to get your footing in uh, that kind of sales market, um, was very, very interesting because even though the recession was still going on and the hard times were had by most, people still needed internet. You know, it was, it was 2008. So, you know, everything was just starting to get all ramped up and big and um, expansive. And it's just one of those things, man, where the market was like, we were busy all the time, all the time, because no matter what, people needed their TV. People needed their internet, or sorry, wanted their TV, I guess I should say. <laughs> Um, needed their internet, um, and you, it was just um, a time where where that industry was flourishing, and then all of a sudden, it got a little bit more difficult because people already had it. Everything was saturated in the market, and in those difficult times, you got to come up with ways to to connect with the people more than just being the person that answers the phone for a multi-billion dollar company. Um, you have to, that's when I started growing my personal brand, I guess, or started learning my personal brand. Um, you just got to talk to people like they're people. Um, all of these, all of these people out here in sales that are old school um, that say, I need to, I need to get in, close, get out. That's not the way it's done anymore. You know, I mean, you got to be, you got to be nice to people. You got to be personable and you got to be uh, relatable. I think is the most um, the most important thing because if you're not relatable, then they're not going to see any value of doing business with you. And so, uh, working um, in the business to business world um, really gave me the opportunity to, I guess, show what I'm made of, so to speak. Um, I was able to get in front of the people, and you know, as interesting and maybe I guess difficult it would be to gain somebody's trust just over a phone conversation. Um, adding the body language and the in-person and the handshake um, was probably the most important thing for me um, to be able to start building um, or growing my personal brand. Um, you know, I want to be the guy, I want to be known as the guy that knows everybody else, you know, and I want to be able to connect people to the right people um, to make sure that business is done in the right way. You still there? Yeah, I'm still here. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. Yeah. So um, th there's a couple things you said there towards the end. You know, nice, personable, relatable. That uh, get in, get out um, stuff. You know, there is an old school mentality uh, because I used to listen to uh, and and I love Zig Ziglar stuff, but uh, that's some old school sales training. I used to listen to Zig Ziglar and Cassette in the '80s, and I can remember one of his things. And although I mean, I absolutely love Zig Ziglar stuff, but one of the things that that I remember that kind of picked up on me is kind of being like a slick old school thing is, will that be cash or charge? You know, it's not, yeah. it's not, <laughs> you know, it, it's closing the sale. Right. And I, obviously sure. Zig Ziglar was quite successful and I think he was a people person. And I, and, and I do remember him giving an example of, of you never know who you're talking with. Right. Mm -hmm. So you, a lot of times you don't know if they haven't introduced them themselves as, you know, hi, I'm Clint Webb, the owner of the company, mm -hmm. and somebody just walks you around, you don't know who Clint Webb is, and and you kind of snub him because you're thinking, well, I've heard of so-and-so, and, you know, and I know so-and-so is important with the company, and so that's mm -hmm. who I'm looking for, and you find out you're actually talking to so-and-so's boss. <laughs> so, right. Um, right, right, or the person they listen to the most and take their advice Right, right. Yeah, it could be an executive assistant that plays a, a huge role in saying, Absolutely. you know, hey, here's, I met this guy, Clint, and I, I really think this is a solid guy. And, you know, he can really, you know, make a difference in our business. And, and they've got the ear of that person. So yeah, I'm with you yeah. there as well. The body language and in person uh, is one of the reasons. So I, I want to dive into this part. This would be something uh, good for you to talk about for a moment, because I know you do a fair amount of face-to-face -face networking. Uh, we actually met, I was the photographer at an event, and most of my exposure in the networking world is doing corporate event photography. So I'm able to meet people like yourself and other folks that I connected 
you know, in that particular case, I think Michelle and I connected and you and I connected and probably one or two other people from that event. So even though I was the hired photographer, uh, I still made some connections. But one of the things I'd like for you to talk about, you said that in-person body language handshake. Um, talk about networking and how that plays a role in your building that credibility as a sales professional. Oh man, it's, uh, it's all about it, to be honest, man. Uh, so, you know, what, what one of my main networking focuses is, is to um, don't go alone. You know, I mean, if you're alone, you're just, you're just a number there, right? So, but if you're, if you're with other people and you surround yourself, I guess not other people, the right people. So if you surround yourself by the right people, it's a, like a magnetism. You know, people, people come, to, come to groups of people to introduce themselves because they're wondering what they're talking about. Why have they been standing together for so long? Why are they, you know, wandering around with each other, you know, introducing themselves? It's, it's an easier way to network. Um, and I'm all about um, smarter, not harder, David. <laughs> so, you know, if, if I can surround myself with the right people, um, that bring the right kind of energy and have the same kind of focus I do on building your brand. So what, what it's always said is if you're the smartest person in your circle, get a new circle, right? If you're the most connected <laughs> person in your circle, get a new circle. So I always try to surround myself with people that are, um, more connected, have better ideas or not met maybe better, just different ideas and a different way of doing things. And I think it is, you know, Doing, doing that, number one, it allows you to not have such a self-conscious, I'm here by myself. What if I don't find anybody to talk to? What if I don't do this? You always have somebody to talk to because you're, with, you're there with your people, right? And having your people, that is the most important thing to me as far as networking goes. I'm not the elevator pitch guy. I'm not, I'm not the prototypical salesperson. I am I'm the sales guy that's going to, number one, going to show up. And you're going to know that I'm going to show up. You're going to know that I'm going to be there um, when I say I'm going to be there. Um, and uh, number two, I don't try to sell you. Like I work on relationships. If you, buy, if, if you want to buy from me, because you will know what I do. And if you want to buy from me, fantastic. If not, I will connect you with the right person for you. Because I'm not the greedy, selfish salesperson. I want you to have the right relationship for you and your business because I mean, eventually, if it ends up being me, you're gonna you're gonna remember that I did that. Yeah, that's a and, and that makes me think of something else because a lot of what you said just then, and obviously uh, there are times that networking may be done like what we're doing right now uh, because mm -hmm. of circumstances, because of distance, because of what's going on in the environment at the time, so people mm -hmm. can still because there's something. Uh, obviously, face to face is really nice, but the the Zoom environment or online stuff like we're doing, and I know that in your case, based on seeing some LinkedIn posts, you've been part of some groups uh, having oh, yeah. discussions like this, and so yeah. uh, that's another way to network. But where I was headed with all that is a lot of the advice that you've shared the whole time and these last few moments about the networking and surrounding yourself with people. Those all sound like habits that people can do during a recession in 2008, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. During other times that the economy may not be going well, or you may be going through difficult times, uh, just getting out there and being about people. Cause that's what I heard you say. It's, it's about yeah. people. It's about relationships. Yeah. And by giving back and helping others and having that attitude, if you have that attitude, no matter what's going on in the economy, um, that is that a correct assumption that I hear you saying that when times are good and when times are not so good, Clint Webb or, or any sales professional should be who they are, building those relationships, doing those things um, to just let people know that you're there. Is that correct? Absolutely. Um, yeah, and I think these Zoom meetings um, are fantastic. So, you know, the, I've been a part of, you know, um, Stephen David Elliott and uh, Rockstar and their three martini lunch. I've been a panelist on that. Um, I've been to a couple of other of those events. I have um, a networking group called Oak City uh, B2B that Michelle is a part of. Okay. Um, and she's actually probably the one that's running it at this point, her and Chris Goen. And we have Zoom meetings um, every week, every other week, uh, just to stay connected, um, to talk about, 
you know, topics that are visible today. Um, and, you know, but it's with the golf courses open too. I mean, it's like, it's kind of, I'm not going to say easier to do networking these days, but we have more time. Right. And so if we can make time for a 10 minute zoom call or an hour networking um, zoom event or, you know, two or three hours on the golf course, you know, taking all, a lot of my business and a lot of my best business since I've been in B2B sales has been on the golf course. It's Cause you mean that that's when you get a chance to talk to people like they're people. Not right. Like and you're going to have, what, two and a half, three hours, depending on the course and depending on the skills yeah. <laughs> and how busy. Yeah, no doubt. So that's, that's a lot. Absolutely. Different, right. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it, it's about, you know, what you build when you're out there. So you mean at a networking event, you have, I don't know, anywhere from 30 seconds to 30 minutes to build a relationship, but something like that, you have hours. Right. And then those hours lead to more hours or lead to a zoom call, which leads to a BNI, which leads to more more right. connection. So it's all about who knows you is what I was told one day by uh, the great Johnny Bass. He said, it's all about <laughs> oh, who knows Johnny. you, not about who you know. <laughs> his, his LinkedIn profile shot is one that I took of him at a networking event. And I think Michelle's <laughs> is one that I took of her at a networking event. So uh, yeah. what I'd like for you to do, Clint, as we wrap up, um, is any closing thoughts. And then once you share your closing thoughts, I will come back and give you an opportunity to mention how people can find you on LinkedIn okay. and things of that nature. But what would you like to leave those either watching or, or listening to this? What are some final thoughts? So you shared a lot of good stuff, but just kind of bring us home and summarize, you know, here's some things that I think you know, or have, have worked great for me or some things that I would encourage you to do, even if it's kind of just rehashing some of what you've already said, but I'll let you kind of bring some closure with some final thoughts. Okay. Um, so just be yourself. I mean, that's just the most important thing uh, to me. So, you know, people see, um, people notice when you're being genuine. And so if you can just stay genuine and are able to build your brand that way, just, you know, my brand, I think, from what I understand, my brand is that I, they know I'm going to be there. And maybe that's not necessarily just at their business, but at an event. You know, it's like the, the things that I did that helped me build my brand so much were going to events and showing up not just once, not just twice, but as you know, being a corporate photographer for these networking events, you have to go more than just the once or the twice for people to know who you are, you know. Um, you know, sponsor events you know, get your name out there. Even these virtual events, they're looking for sponsors. And so you want to throw your name and your company name on something with a logo. That's what you should do. Spend the 50 bucks, spend the hundred bucks, whatever is worth it to you to get your name out there, but stay consistent. And most importantly, stay present. I, great way to close. Stay consistent, stay present right there. And uh, what I'm going to do um, is I've been taking notes. That's what, that's how I come up with the, uh, titles for these things. You know, I, I take advantage of the hundred characters on YouTube and I pretty much get to 90 something to write at a hundred. And so stay present, um, and, you know, stay consistent, stay present. I think those are some great closing words. So what I'd like to do now, Clint, as we completely close out this segment together is share with people how they can find you on LinkedIn or, or any other uh, places out there that you might want to share. But I know that you and I, uh, most of our interactions on LinkedIn, but you may have some other ways out there that you're active on that you want to let people know about. So just close, bring us home with a final closure of uh, how people can get connected with you. You know what, David, I'm probably the simplest of anybody that you're going to have on this show, man. Um, I only have one social media presence and that is LinkedIn. I do not do the Facebook. I'm just, I wasn't, I didn't want to get caught up in the endless scroll, you know, so okay. to speak. And it took away, it feels like it took away years of my life. So I decided to, you know, about seven years ago, six or seven years ago to not do Facebook anymore. Um, but um, LinkedIn is where you can find me. I have a, a very, a very good presence on LinkedIn. I am, I post at least three or four times a week uh, with different networking events, different, you know, uh, experiences, different articles, you know, it's, um, th that's really it, man. I mean, I'm super duper simple. Um, <laughs> but uh, my, my email is, web that is w-e-b-b -B, at coeco.com 
Um, as I said, we are a locally owned company. Um, and if you want to know any more or have anybody that is in need of multifunctional printers, scanners, um, home office equipment, especially around these, these days and ages that we're living in, home office equipment is a big deal for us. Um, you can always give me a call. Um, my number is 919-265-3513. Um, I prefer texting um, because uh, it's just, I don't know, it's just a lot easier, oh, especially yeah. when you're trying to do Zoom calls and you're, you know, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But um, yeah, just LinkedIn is my main social media presence. Well, that's awesome. And I know that I see a lot of your stuff on LinkedIn. And so what I'll do is make sure that in the description of the YouTube video, as well as the description uh, and the podcast, I'll put a link to your LinkedIn profile. So hopefully okay. uh, you'll build some connections. If, and obviously I'll be pinging you uh, when I post this on LinkedIn. So I want to thank you, Clint, uh, for taking time out of your day today to, uh, to join me. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Stay consistent and stay present is what I'd like to leave folks with, which is how you closed out your segment. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you. Have a fantastic day. Thank you again, David. I look forward to next time.